Hey everyone, welcome back to PSTAT 5A with CLES. In today's example, we're going to look at the difference between two proportions um, in unit eight. So in this problem here, we're going to be constructing a confidence interval for the difference between proportions. And what that means is basically the following. Let me draw a number line here. And since all proportions are between zero and one, that's what I'm gonna highlight. And what I wanna look at is two sample of proportions. And if we identify the proportions, one of them is gonna be high school students, the other one will be junior high school students. And so I wanna label these one and two respectively. And the reality is it doesn't matter which one you label one, which one you label two, as long as you remain consistent throughout. So I'm gonna call high school students one, just because I feel like it and junior high school students too. Now you see in several different places, we have proportions here, proportions. So we're looking at sample proportions. So from the data, I've got P hat one. This is the sample proportion of high school students who own a smartphone. And that is the 80 out of 144. And if I choose to do so, I can convert this to a decimal. And that looks like to be a little over a half. And just for right now, I'm going to graph it slightly over here. So there's p hat 1. Similarly, I'm going to do p hat 2, which is the sample proportion of junior high school students who own a smartphone. And that's 40 out of 85. So that looks to be slightly under a half at 0 0.4706. And I'm gonna graph that over here too. And again, the graph is just to illustrate my point. And that is, I don't actually care where these two proportions are. What I'm interested in is their difference. So if we look here, we want, does this represent a significant difference? And again, the difference between proportions. So the difference is this, distance here. So the point of chapter eight is to compare two proportions and trying to identify if there's a significant difference. So the parameter that we're interested in is in fact this difference. And what we're going to look at is if you look at my diagram, if the two sample proportions are farther apart from each other, this difference grows bigger. And if they're closer together, the difference grows smaller. So the idea is we're going to compare this difference to the number zero. Because if the difference is zero, we're saying there's really no difference between them, while the sample values may change. So we're going to borrow the same idea from the last two chapters for confidence interval, and that is our estimate, and then plus or minus some margin of error. And then as you've seen in chapter six and seven, how we came up with a margin of error were just dependent on the random variables that you're using and how they're constructed. And so you can follow along in your lecture slides, but to recap here, this margin of error for unit eight is gonna be our Z distribution, P hat one, one minus P hat one over N one, and then plus, same thing, but with the second sample proportion, and this part's under the square root. And then our estimate here is this difference, right? So this is our estimate here, and that's just gonna be the difference between P1 hat and P2 hat. And so the idea here is, again, the significant part of unit eight throughout is while I'm using my two separate sample proportions, I'm not actually interested in their values what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse the two values into, again, this difference here. And it's the size of that difference that we're into. So this is really it. I'm just gonna now plug in all of my values and see if I can get a final result and then interpret that result. So if I follow my numbers above, this difference right here is gonna be 0 0.085. We've seen from the previous two chapters that for 95% confidence, the Z value that corresponds to that is 
And then now I'm just going to plug in all of my values. I've got the 80 over 144, and then 1 minus that. Then I'll do the same thing for the second sample. 40 over 85, 1 minus that. So this gets kind of messy as you see here. And depending on the calculator you're using, you might want to convert this all to decimals, just whatever's easier, but just be careful. It looks kind of messy. It's kind of easy to make a mistake, but at the end of the day, all of this here is my margin of error. And if I plug it into my calculator, I get this value, which is about 13%, you can say. And then our point estimate here is 085. So what we're saying is in the snapshot that we have in this picture, the gap between P1 hat and P2 hat is about 8.5%. Now, because of sampling distributions and random sampling, then the potential error for that gap is right here around 13%. When I add and subtract, I get an interval that goes from negative 0486 to 2186. Now you might be thinking these are proportions, how can it be negative? Well, remember, this confidence interval is not for the proportion, it's for this difference here, right? We're estimating this difference and we're seeing the size of that difference. And again, you also might think, well, what does it mean for the distance between two things to be negative? Well, it just means one's below the other one. But at the end of the day, if I am trying to ballpark this difference and I get an interval that looks like this, I notice this is saying the difference could be zero, right? Because if my lower bound is negative, my upper bound is positive, then the number zero is in there. And if the difference could be zero, then ultimately what we're saying is when we extrapolate the sample data to the overall population, we're saying, well, there could be, you know, no real significant difference, even though our sample suggests that a higher proportion of high school students own a smartphone. So this is why it's important to do tests and not just conclude things from sample data, because we know that samples are very sensitive to random variation. So hopefully this helps and we'll clear this up in example 8.2 in the next video when we do hypothesis testing.